Welcome to the Weekly Report. I'm Michael Morris TV. Yes, I'm to do that. Thank you. Thanks. Today, we're going to talk about the one thing that's still fresh on everyone's mind. Super Bowl. Quite the game. Packers scrape the Steelers 31-25. But let's face it. Everyone watches the Super Bowl for two reasons. The commercials and the halftime show. And uh, I'd say this year, everyone was pretty disappointed. Oh, yeah. Especially with Christina Aguilar's rendition of the national anthem. Yeah, she, uh, she seemed to have made up a few lines of her own there. Cut her some slack. She was under a lot of pressure. I mean, with a record 111 million people watching, I'd be a little freaked out myself. Yeah, alright. But you, you would think they'd have like some sort of measures to prevent that, you know? Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light? What's so proudly we so have? We and the twilight's are screaming. Hosty, don't repeat that second line. What? Repeat the second line? No achievement is not on. Let's book it. I would think so. Something must have gone wrong, though. Yeah, still a little disappointing, though. I mean, this is a singer who was making some big money to sing the most American song at the most American sporting event in existence. She can't even remember eight lines correctly. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? And there are the commercials, usually a favorite. And in the past couple of years, advertisers have been on the rise with creativity, never failing to entertain their viewers. Something went wrong this year, though. Yeah. Harry, show them the chart. Uh, it was fairly disappointing to the many fans, the lack of creativity and humor in these year's commercials. And for three million mad bills for 30 seconds, I think they could have done a lot better. I agree, although I did like the career builder one with the monkeys. Stuck between a bad job and a hard place. Ron, did you, did you notice maybe you clipped me a little bit there? Careerbuilder.com. Start building. Ron! Have you seen the monkey mail thing they have on their website? Hey, you there. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I see you sitting there. I'm coming for you. <laughs> uh, no, no, I can't say that I have. You should really check it out. And then, of course, there was the halftime show. I'm not even quite sure where to begin here. Alright, so they had a real opportunity to make a good show they had great artists, they had great ideas, but they just blew it. Yeah, they were, well, they really could have made this good. Instead, they made it kind of decent. A little bit. Like this much. Yeah. A big part of it was related to the sound. I mean, our sound guy could probably do a better job than whoever was working the sound that night. <laughs> Maybe it was one of the career builder monkeys. And explain it. I think this had the potential to be really good, but I got the sense that they tried way too hard and wound up with this mess. Yeah, because the acts they got that night were good, but they just kind of sucked. When they came down from that dome, I mean, it was a dome, right? What else? Alright, and when I am started out with I Got a Feeling, you're thinking to yourself, this is going to be pretty good. Then they start rapping. You can't hear the instrumentals. Their clothing is giving the guy next to you a seizure, and the auto tune is cranked up so high that if you weren't looking, you wouldn't, able to, you wouldn't be able to distinguish who was singing. Even Fergie at some points. Yeah, because Fergie, to be honest, sounds like a man. It's true. Then Slash comes out of this hole in the stage and starts playing Sweet Child of Mine. So my initial thought was, okay, Slash should save the day, and he nails his parts. But you can't really hear him over Fergie, who just butchered the song anyway. Just, just go away, Fergie. And she was all over him, too. Yeah, and you could tell he wasn't crazy about it. I think the whole idea of people dressed up in light-up suits was a pretty good idea, if done right. They obviously stole it from the Chinese, and there were some points where it was just a train wreck, like right here. See, it looks like they're trying to make a circle. I guess some of them may have heard like weird oval thing inside a circle. I don't know, but uh, that's not a circle. No, it's definitely not. And then there was Usher's performance. 
He came down from the dome too, like everyone else, and started his act, but it took him a couple seconds to realize his flamboyant headset wasn't correctly positioned over his mouth. I still didn't hear much from him. Mm, no, you know, I felt like his whole piece all together was just a little homosexual. I agree. Oh, 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 oh. And they continue on with their ensemble of songs, which is really just segments of like eight songs fading into one another. Some of the dances were pretty cool though. And I owe it all to you, 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 Yeah, I kinda enjoyed Where is the Love? I think it was the only one they did okay in. Alright, so that's all we have for you this week, and now here to perform the single from their new album, Give It Up for the Black Eyed Peas. Yeah! Oh, wait. What do you mean they left? Why, why would they do that? What? Uh, um, I don't know. Because we'll just have to go out with some news music in a classic studio pan then. Sounds like a plan. Have a good week, everyone. People got me, got me questioning! Where is the love?